Namaste, everyone. Uh, welcome to the uh, results of uh, announcement of the results of the IKS Division's various initiatives. And uh, as is the tradition uh, with the IKS Division's team, we'll start with a Mangalachan. Om Shanno Mitrasham Varunaha Shanno Bhavatwar Yama Shanna Indro Brihaspatihe Shanno Vishnu Rurukramaha Namo Brahmane Namaste Vayo Twameva Pratyaksham Brahmasi Twameva Pratyaksham Brahma Vadishami Ritam Vadishami Satyam Vadishami Tanma Mavatu Tad Bhaktara Mavatu Avatumam Avatu Bhaktaram Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Most everyone. And uh, um, today uh, I'm joined by my colleagues, uh, Dr. Anuradha Chaudhary ji uh, and uh, Dr. Rochika Singh, our two coordinators. And Rochika Singh ji is um, one of our new joinees as a coordinator and then we have Piyush and Kautilya here who have joined us and uh, we were supposed to be joined by Professor uh, Sitaramji, uh, chairman of ASCT. Unfortunately, he had to uh, rush because of some last minute uh, meeting, important meeting that he had to rush. So therefore, uh, he sends his greetings and uh, wishes you all well. And uh, can I request a PowerPoint slide to be shown? Please like, please. Yes. So we are here to uh, announce the results of three initiatives. We had uh, basically indicated uh, earlier that we have four initiatives: uh, Bharatiya Jnana Samvardhana Yojana. The three initiatives that for which we are going to announce the results are Bharatiya Jnana Samvardhana Yojana, the research proposals, outcome-based research proposals, Bharatiya Jnana Samposhana Kendram Gaveshanam, the IKS research centers. Bharatiya Jnana Shikshika Prashikshana Kendram, the IK Centers for Curriculum Development, uh, Material Development and uh, Teacher Training. Next slide, please. And we had announced these uh, four initiatives and we are going to take three of them uh, today. Next slide, please. And uh, let us start off with the first one, Bharatiya Jnana Samvardhan Yojana, the outcome-based research proposal program for this year, 2023-2024. So, if you remember the uh, over uh, the idea of this these grants is to make uh, catalytic changes and encourage original, serious, deep scholarly research in the Indian knowledge systems, and primarily focused on primary research, and uh, that is essentially going to create uh, deep scholars. We had announced the program on 23rd of June. The proposals were due by 31st of July. We had promised you that we will announce the awards by end of August, and today we are here to. Keep our promises. Next slide, please. And so we had received uh, about, can you move that thing a little bit? Yeah. Yeah. So we had received about 491 proposals. And as you know, we conduct a three phase review process. And after ranking by scores, 22 of those proposals had advanced to phase three of uh, panel presentations. And uh, among them, 13 proposals have been finally been selected for the funding. Next slide, please. So there were seven focus areas. And uh, in the mathematics and astronomy area, we had received 28 proposals. And out of them, one proposal has been selected. And in sustainable agriculture and food preservation area, 138 proposals were received. And one proposal was selected out of that. And in the new universal sociological models based on emic perspective, we had received 61 proposals. And we had funded, we have fun, we are, uh, re uh, review panel has recommended funding of two proposals. In the uh, management of water resources, weather and rainfall, out of 51, five proposals, one proposal is being funded. And five proposals are being funded out of 138 in uh, uh, psychology, cognition, consciousness. 
and in evidence based music and dance interventions and their relevance in contemporary world out of 38 proposals one proposal is being funded and we have introduced a new area this time called pashu ayurveda based approaches so in that new area out of 34 proposals that were submitted two proposals have been selected let us now look into the specific ones. So the very first one in the mathematics and astronomy area is the proposal by Dr. Unni Krishnan from Sri uh, Achita Menon uh, Government College from uh, in Kerala. Minimize it. Minimize it. So basically, this is about uh, looking into the close. This is looking into weather patterns in Kerala, the planetary uh, motions, positions. And then there is another proposal by Dr. S. Kumar, S. K. Kumar from uh, Transdisciplinary Health Sciences University, uh, Science and Technology in Bengaluru. It is on a study on the efficacy of Pashu Ayurveda formulations as an alternative to antibiotics in bovine infectious conditions for uh, reducing the antimicrobial res uh, resistance. As you know, more than 70% of the antibiotics are used in animal agriculture. So this is a priority area for us. And a lot of uh, people have been working in, uh, to reduce the use of antibiotics and then consequently the antimicrobial resistance. Similarly, another study, very interesting study from Chhattisgarh, by, uh, led by Dr. Rakesh Mishraji from Dao Sri Vasudeva Chandra, uh, Chandrakar Kamathena University in Durg, Chhattisgarh. They are going to study the uh, Shastrokta Ayurveda Aushadis, how uh, do a clinical study of that on management of the crimi or the gastrointestinal worms in goats. And uh, you must have heard about a, a recent paper that talked a few years ago that talked about what is called as a Sanskrit effect. So Dr. Deepthi Navaratna from National Institute of Advanced Sciences uh, Studies of Bengaluru will be looking into understanding that effect, at, uh, that uh, so-called Sanskrit effect in a more fundamental way, especially coming in from the Carnatic rhythm and mantra-based interventions, especially using Solukattu and things like that for basically children with dyslexia and improving their cognitive function and training and making sure that uh, those effects are minimized and things like that. So that is the impact. Uh, that is a project that uh, Dr. Deepthi Narutna is going to look into. And then there is another uh, project from uh, Dr. Sudrata Gain from Chandarnagar College from West Bengal. Uh, Dr. Uh, Sudrata Gain will be looking at Bharatir as you know, a lot of the psychology is right now as it is taught, is taught from a very Western perspective. So here is uh, Dr. Subrata Gayan and his uh, scholars, they are Sanskrit scholars from Chandranagar College. They will be looking into it from an emic perspective and providing the Bharatiya view of the Manastatva Viveka and that is essentially the project there. Next one. And then Dr. Chitrasin Lairanzan from Nagaland University will be looking into the Zabo farming system, uh, which is a farmer managed traditional irrigation system that is practiced in, a small, commu in small communities in, under, uh, under hill environments in Nagaland, which combines very interesting aspects of forestry, agroforestry, it has agriculture, forestry, aquaculture, animal husbandry and uh, water resource management. And it's a very interesting way of understanding about the water uh, resource management systems. So uh, Dr. Chetrasen Larenza will be looking into that. And then from uh, Vadodra, uh, Maharaja Sayajirao University of Baroda, uh, Vadodra, Gujarat, Professor Hitesh Raviya will be looking into exploring the uh, Upanishad's influence on Western literary discourse of consciousness because Upanishads, as we know, have had a very strong influence on a lot of thinkers, original thinkers in the Western literary discourse. And uh, Dr. Hitesh Ravya will be looking at that to understand and also uh, basically put uh, this thing, uh, bring it to the uh, world about what is this that the influence of uh, Upanishads had on the Western literary uh, discourse and thinking of various uh, people there. And also Dr. Sudha from uh, Avinashalingam Institute for Home Science and Higher Education from uh, Coimbatore, or for women in Coimbatore, will be working on a scale for Karma Yoga among young adults. So she will be developing and validating a scale to measure the karma yoga among young adults so that this can make them functional again from a Bharatiya perspective. And Dr. R.G. Sharad Chandra from uh, Tumkur University is going to look at a uh, very interesting uh, approach of managing soil fertility 
and microbiome and plant health in an integrated way based on Kashyapiya Krishi Paddhati, where they have talked about a uh, specific liquid uh, type of a fertilizer called Vritika Jeeva Mishrana, which they will be using for the first time, not just to treat the soil, but also to treat the seeds for the first time here. And they will be working on cucumber and uh, tomatoes uh, crops uh, in this uh, project. And they're also aided by uh, another uh, Sanskrit scholars in the part of this. Uh, Dr. Swatah Siddha Sarkar from Center for Himalayan Studies, University of North Bengal, is going to study about the new concept of Himalayan studies from a Bharatiya perspective. Well, Himalayan studies is a very well-established discipline, but it is coming primarily from a very Western concepts and Western idea, uh, viewpoints, perspectives. So what Dr. Swadha Siddha Sarkar will do is bring out the Bharatiya perspective of the Himalayas. And then essentially that is what they're meaning by saying towards conceptualizing a new Himalayan studies. And uh, Professor Amit Kumar from IFLU, English and Foreign Language uh, University in Hyderabad, is going to talk about uh, Bhartrihari's photo theory and image studies. Bhartrihari had uh, uh, come up with a very interesting uh, thesis that you make the sentence, uh, the meaning of a sentence explodes as a sporta and it comes all at once in a sentence. So instead of looking at words, mm -hmm. he was looking at the sentences for making the meaning. And uh, of course, there were uh, counter uh, arguments by Gunava Gupta and all that later. But what Dr. Kumar will be using is use this Bhartrahari's photo theory to look at images, both graphic images from the West advertisements from the West uh, and also images that we have used in uh, various Indian culture with Indian uh, cultural bases like Elora cave paintings, different paintings of uh, Indians and also some uh, French uh, uh, artists to look at how this can be extended to uh, image studies as well. And Dr. Richard Chopra from uh, IK Center of Excellence from IIT Khadakpur will be looking into a Yoga Vedanta theoretical framework for first person accounts of sadhaks from different Indic schools of thought. This is going to be a very, very important study because what we have in science is we mostly accept only a third person uh, account of uh, inquiry. Whereas in a Bharatiya perspective, the first person inquiry has been placed on an equal or in, in fact at a higher footing compared to a third person inquiry. And this particular project will be looking into that uh, specifically. One of the things that a lot of uh, scholars face when they are uh, really looking into uh, any Shastra, for example, Nyaya Shastra, is that lack of online good dictionaries that will actually provide them a context and a good meaning, like cross-referenced meanings of various technical terms. So Dr. S. Vijayashree from Sanskriti Foundation, Mysore, will be preparing a detailed dictionary of Indian logic based on Nyaya Darshan and other allied texts in an online and physical print versions. And this is going to help a lot of, uh, they'll be doing a lot of work on this part. And then very soon uh, we'll hopefully see a Nyaya Darshana uh, dictionary that will help a lot of researchers both in Nyaya Shastra and also computer science. So, so these were the 13 projects that we had funded as a part of the Bharati Jnana Sambardhana Yojana. So coming to the Bharati Jnana Samposhana Kendram, the Gaveshanam Kendras, Next slide, please. So this also had the same dates. 23rd June, we announced the programs and we had uh, uh, basically the proposals were due by 31st of July. The announcement of the awards was supposed to be end of August. So here we are again. Go back, please. So these centers, go back. Go back. The centers are designed to encourage and fund the establishment of these IKS centers with a view to catalyze original research, education, and dissemination. So all the centers, these Gaveshana centers have three aspects to them. It's like these. These are the 20 areas for these IK centers. And you can see they basically map to the entire uh, range of uh, modern studies and all the way going from health, wellness, to philosophy, to shipbuilding, to mathematics, astronomy, zoology, perfumery. And that was, by, by the way, one of the first areas that, uh, new areas that we had introduced this time, architecture, so sports, martial arts, it really spans the entire uh, uh, IKS and the modern uh, uh, knowledge domains that we have. So each center was asked to pick two to four such areas and then go forward with it. Excellent, please. And the idea was to pick two to four maximum thematic areas and work on research, 
uh, that will lead to practical products or practices and then current uh, solutions to current societal problems and involving that is part of the interdisciplinary research and in education mentoring we have to involve students younger faculty so that we can keep the parampara alive and then also the outreach and dissemination efforts are all focused on outreach to the general public next slide please so we have received 82 proposals and after a very rigorous as you know uh, two-phase review we invited eight uh, PIs for making their presentation to the panel in phase three and that panel recommended four proposals for funding next slide please and these are the four centers. Uh, the first one, very first one, is the Center for Ruksha Ayurveda Research and Training in GB Pant University of Agriculture and Technology in Pantnagar and Asia Agri History Foundation in US Nagar in Uttarakhand, uh, led by Dr. Sumita T. Pandey and her team. Uh, both GB Pant Agricultural University, as you know, is very, very well known and in fact is the uh, basically the heart at the heart of the green revolution in our country and asia agri history foundation on the other hand is one of the pioneering pioneering organizations which has actually brought out a lot of the agricultural texts like ruksha ayurveda krishi parashara all of them into print after maybe some hundreds and thousands of years and mm -hmm. this is essentially the real and uh, dr sunita pandey and her team are a team of uh, scholars both well versed in IKS and also the texts, technical texts, and also are practicing agronomists who actually run these uh, uh, tests and all uh, basically run the crop lot studies and things like that. So they will be working on Vriksha Ayurveda research and also taking that to the farmers. That is about the training part is there uh, in that uh, center. And then uh, Dr. Uh, Bhagyashri Bhavre and Dr. Chaya Goswami from KJ Subaya Institute of Dharma Studies from Mumbai will be looking into uh, basically they are calling their as Indian Knowledge System Center at Sumaya Vidya Vihar University. Located on the west coast, they will be looking into uh, this will be one of our uh, unique centers that will be looking into shipbuilding and uh, maritime, uh, basically construction of uh, techniques of shipbuilding and Pantani paintings. So this is what the center will be looking into. So we are very excited about the shipbuilding the technologies because, you know, uh, we last year we conducted a uh, uh, Thara program on uh, Samud called Samudra Manthan in collaboration with the Ministry of Culture. And uh, as a part of those results and things like that, of that uh, meetings and uh, conferences, now, uh, Ministry of Culture and Indian Navy are building a uh, large scale ship, large uh, real model, uh, real scale uh, stitched, uh, stitched boat uh, using uh, ship using stitch boat uh, technology. And then coming to the third proposal that is uh, selected, Dr. A. V. Narasimha Rao from uh, Samskrita Bharati Telangana will be working on uh, Tarka and Nyaya Shastras, especially the Tarka Shastra. They will be uh, trying to uh, focus their center on that and doing some very, very interesting uh, uh, studies on that part. And then Dr. Ramanand from Abhinava Gupta Institute of Advanced Studies, Idukki, Kerala, will be looking at how Kashmir is connected to Kerala mm -hmm. and uh, through uh, Shaivism, basically Kashmiri Shaivism and how it is a living practice even in Kerala and Tamil Nadu and uh, how it basically connects our country as one. The cultural threads of uh, these uh, uh, Kashmiri Shaivism run from Kashmir to Kerala to Karnataka. Uh, Tamil Nadu as one culture, one unbroken tradition of cultural uh, heritage. So they will be looking into those aspects as well. And coming to the Bharatiya Jnana Shikshika Prashikshana Kendram, next slide please. This was the first time that we had introduced this uh, type of a center where the aim was to prepare course materials and then disseminate that content with a special focus on science, technology, engineering, arts and mathematics in uh, essentially the STEAM disciplines. This was aiming to push forward the uh, implement the UGC guidelines that have recently been announced by the UGC for incorporation of IKS into the uh, curriculum, undergraduate and postgraduate curriculum. Similarly, uh, in, this also had the same dates, 23rd of June, we had announced the program, the proposals were due by 31st of July, and we are here again announcing the awards. Next slide, please. And this one also received a overwhelming response. We had uh, received 51 proposals 
and a uh, lot of good proposals. In fact, mm -hmm. half of them were uh, really selected by the phase two. They had really tough time selecting the proposals and uh, they selected 26 of those proposals for phase three. And in phase three, uh, 17 proposals were recommended. So, I mean, it is always the case. I mean, just by looking at this, uh, previous ones, we have received some 89 proposals and we had selected four centers. So it is not that IKS uh, division does not fund uh, proposals that selectively, but we are selective when we receive good proposals, we do fund them in very, very high amounts. So for example, here, success rate is 33%. So as you can see, so let's see the uh, proposals that have been selected. So the very first one is courses on uh, Indian chemistry and material science and metallurgy by uh, Dr. V. Ramanathan from IITBHU. They will be developing courses on uh, uh, Indian chemistry for chemistry students and uh, material science students. And the Siddhanta IKS training center uh, led by Dr. Vaishnavi Nishankar and her team from Siddhanta Knowledge Foundation will be working on four very, very important courses that will basically help students understand the frameworks that are present in the Indian knowledge systems. And Dr. Akhilesh Kumar Vivediji from Maharshi Pandini Sanskrit Evam Vaidika Vishwadhyalaya Ujjain will be working on Sanskrit Shikshana Prashikshana Jnana Vikas Sambardhana Kendra where they will be looking into bringing natural language processing for students of Nyaya and Vyakarana. So they are bringing in expertise, experts uh, in the natural language processing and then teaching that to the students of Shastra who learn Nyaya Shastra who are learning Nyaya Shastra and Vyakana Shastra. And Dr. VSS Pavan Kumar Hari from IIT Bombay and Manabhasha Adhyana Parishad Trust will be working on Sanskrit Andhra Vangmaya Adhyapana Gurukula, uh, Gurukulamu, uh, the first phase of that. This is where they will be bringing in the experts of Sanskrita Andhra Bhasha. So that means Telugu and the Sanskrita, uh, all the Vangmaya, that is all the literature present in these two languages and taking some stalwarts and then creating courses for students who will be taking BA English, BA Hindi and other uh, things. So essentially introducing them to the uh, vast literature that is present in uh, uh, Telugu and uh, Sanskrita. And Center for IKS in Chanakya University, led by Dr. Vinay Chandra Manavati ji, will be working again on a, course, a few courses uh, that they are already working on Indian psychology, Indian uh, Bharati yoga, yoga darshana. And so they will be creating such courses for uh, other uh, centers. Dr. Acharya Shreyas uh, Kubrekar ji from JSDIVSR uh, Nagpur will be working on uh, developing courses again on Shikshaka Prashikshana Kendram for uh, basically to look at various uh, sociological aspects of things and then they will be developing courses in that uh, regime, social studies area. Next slide please. And then Professor Arna Bhattacharya will be working on computational linguistics, Tarka and science of Kala uh, for students in computer science, engineering and uh, other disciplines of engineering. And uh, Dr. Shyamala Kamath from Samvit Research Foundation will be working on courses for BA teachers. <laughs> Excuse me. On how to teach IKS in curriculums. So because as you know, NEP talks about rootedness as one of the major areas. So uh, uh, Dr. Shyamala Kamad and her team will be leading uh, in developing courses for B. Ed. teachers. And then in Yuktip Prasarana Kendra uh, by uh, uh, SC SVMV, Dr. K. Srinivasa Rao uh, is basically from Sri Chandrasekharendra Saraswati Vishwa Mahavidya Alaya uh, from Kanchipuram. will again be working on different yoga, nyaya and uh, vyakarana uh, uh, courses for uh, different uh, students. Then we are very happy to have a Professor uh, Vice Admiral Pradeep Chauhanji uh, from who is leading the National Maritime Foundation and his team working on a maritimity center. The maritimity center will be looking at India's continuous maritime traditions that we had for thousands of years and uh, spread over several millennia, looking at its continuous traditions in both shipbuilding technologies, battles, business, geopolitics, and so on and so forth. So when we uh, think about it, India is the only country in the world which has an ocean named after it. And it was not named because we were uh, a landlocked country. It was named because we, those Indian Ocean was India's ocean. So this is something that will take that uh, thing back, turn the clock back, and then show us how uh, we have progressed in history.
Dr. Sujimna Acharya ji from uh, Central Sanskrit University, New Delhi, will be working on mathematical logic and physical science as described in Yaya Shastra for the benefit of students in physics and computer science uh, and uh, mathematics. And uh, Dr. T.S. Gopal from Anantakumar Pratishthana will be working on two different, and in, in, in his team will be working on two courses where they will be looking into uh, Devalaya, uh, basically temples as social, uh, basically hotspots where there was a mixture of economics. Uh, basically, there was it was not just simply a religious place, but it was also a place where so uh, society used to come together for business, economics, all kinds of so social transactions and all kinds of social interactions used to happen. So how that is done and how that was done, that entire history of temples and their management will be part of the course that uh, Dr. T.S. Gopal and his team will be developing. Dr. Ashwini Pethe from MIT School of Architecture, MIT uh, ADT University, Pune, will be working on uh, introducing architecture uh, courses on Vastavitya, Sthapatya Kala and town planning as described in various texts of Bharat, like Mayamata, Samarangana Sutra Dhara, and uh, all of these texts, in Narada Shilpa Sutra, all of these things for uh, basically architectural students who are taking their BR classes and MR classes. And then Dr. Preeti Jagwani ji from uh, Aryabhata College, University of Delhi, will be working on ancient Indian mathematics and astronomy. That's uh, self-explanatory there. Dr. Arun Surendran uh, from uh, Trinity College of Engineering, which is also a center for uh, IKS, center for Kalari, Payetto and Siddha traditions. They will be working on developing specifically courses on uh, Kalari, Payetto and uh, how we can take it to uh, in incorporate that into the curriculums. And uh, uh, Dr. Ravi, K.B. Ravi from Sri Dharmasthala Manjunathishwara College of Ayurveda, Putpadi, Udupi, will be again be working on Pashu Ayurveda related courses and then taking it to veterinarians. And Dr. Amit Kumar Dubey from Indus University will again be working on different knowledge transmission mechanisms in India that were there and developing courses centered around that. So these are the 17 proposals that have been funded in the Shikshaka Prashikshana Kendra and uh, congratulations and our heartfelt gratitude to all the applicants and congratulations to all the winners of uh, 13 proposals, 4 centers and 17 uh, uh, basically, the Shikshaka Prashikshana Kendras. Next slide, please. Next slide. Next, Next slide. So, uh, again, uh, as you know, we are all, always uh, already uh, ready for the next uh, challenge. And uh, I think this is a wrong slide, but I will just say that uh, this thing. The results for the Bharati Jnana Samposhna Kendra, the Bhasha Kendras will be announced soon. And uh, the second round of basically the research and IKS center proposals is also going to come. We'll be announcing those things in September, uh, somewhere around uh, middle of September and uh, the proposals will be due by end of October. And again, as is the tradition here, we'll announce the results by end of November. And so please watch out for many, many announcements that will be coming your way on IKSIndia.org. And uh, with those things, <laughs> thank you everyone and Dhaniwala. Uh, so uh, we'll be posting these uh, documents on our website and uh, again, congratulations happy to all the winners and uh, wish you all a very happy Onam and uh, Namaste to everyone and we'll uh, finish with a Shanti Mantra. Om Sarve Bhavantu Sukhinaha Sarve Santu Niramayaha Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu Pakaschid Dukhabhag Bhavet Om Shanti Shanti Shanti, Shanti.